Hey guy, uh, thought we'd just give you a little video tour of our prototype. Um, just wanted to let you know this was uh, built as a prototype. This isn't how we would 100% build all the ones in the future. But this is in a modified C can. It's 14 feet. Um, basic concept is fans and filters. So we're just pulling air through, just like you guys are doing in your servers, using the same concept for fresh air cooling. Um, these are just louvered fans. They're 6,000 CFM each. Uh, these louvers are gravity. Uh, we're trying to get it as cheap as possible. We've used louvers in the past that are uh, that, that are motorized and, and controlled, but again, if all that adds cost, that could be an option that we, we could add. Um, this unit's 14, like I said. That's a 20-footer there. Um, that's what we're going to be building it in is 20 feet in the future. Gives us a little bit more airspace in the front and in the back of the racks. And this side here is the intake, uh, the air filter intake. Um, we went with very consumer level filters because one, they're easy to find, and two, they're cheap. So anyone can go to a home hardware store and, and, and buy these filters. They're just 25 inch square filters, and you can choose whatever uh, filter level that you want. If you come in, we built, we built this all out of plywood, and that's probably what we would use. Um, it's the easiest to mount things, it's, it's cheap and it's fast, and that's probably how we would do it in the future. Um, there'd be some more metal pieces inside, but again, like I said, this is the prototype. Three racks. This has the 17 spondulies that we bought from you guys, the SP31s. Um, right now, this has a maximum capacity of 72 kW. These are about 52 kW. Uh, we might be able to get a few more in here um, once we balance all the power requirements out, but we just didn't want to overdo that uh, when we first started. Um, this unit's a 200 amp system. Again, like I said, 72 kilowatts. We can do a 400 amp as well, which is double that power. And we think we can get 36 of your SP35s into that unit. These are all spaced, as you can see. The whole concept is we're pulling air through as as you know, fairly rapidly, we need some uh, space in between so we can actually pull air through and across the servers. So it comes in the front of the servers and past the servers so we can pull all the air out the back um, and evacuate that heat because it's building up fairly quickly. We've got, um, in this unit, we've got, uh, you know, switch. We've got um, just a, a monitoring server here that does environmental and all of your systems. We're going with very basic, very basic switches in this, uh, switches in BX. Again, very cheap. Um, the fans, there's three of them. They'll each be on a single breaker, and each one of them will have a have a either an on-off switch or a potentiometer to adjust speed. Um, again, very for the most basic model. And you know, a couple convenience plugs. That's all we have. Um, it's it's a very basic setup. It works really well. We've been running it now for a while, and we've managed to run it um, on two fans. We've run it in warm temperature. We've run it in fairly cold temperature. We've been down near zero, and and it runs quite a bit better, um, obviously when it's colder. And you know, as long as this unit's in ambient temperature of 30 degrees or less, we should have no problem running any spondulies in in this. Data center. So we're on the back side in the hot aisle here. Uh, talk a little bit, a bit about the electrical. We've got 60 amp PDUs, which are the best size to use with these particular uh, SP31s and SP35s. We can get three servers per uh, per PDU. There's a couple of options. These are very cheap PDUs. Um, there's a couple brands that we can get for you know under $300. Um, they're just metered. They're not switched or or uh, managed. So one of the options is to uh, put in a remote power cycle for each power bar. So either you can buy it with that in, which probably brings the whole cost way too high, or we put a, a relay system in. So remotely you can come in and you can actually shut down each individual power bar. So if you have to reset power supplies, at the most you're going to take three servers down at a time. So this one has six, six PDUs. And you know, we go up from there with uh, a 400 amp unit that has 36 servers. We're going to have to have more PDUs. And we have ones that are quite a bit smaller than this as well. So let's go over some of the options. The very base unit we went through already. Now we can add on options on top of the price uh, that we talked about. Um, some of the options could include uh, an automatic, automatic transfer switch. So if you have two different sources of power, 
and you lose one, you can switch automatically to the other source of power so you don't, uh, you know, you don't stay down very long. Um, there's a lot of automation that we can add in. So what we can do is um, put in a PLC. Um, this one doesn't have a PLC, uh, but we're going to be putting that in and testing it. And what these are are variable speed controllers for the fans. So with the PLC and the fan controllers, we can control and, and maximize the, the power that's consumed by the fans and, and keep all the temperatures automatically in sync in the unit. Without this, with just switches, we just turn the fans on full blast and it, it, uh, it runs less than optimal, but it still works fine. Um, with, these, with, with this here, what, what this is is a power meter. It's a remotely managed power meter and it gives you the full power usage, kilowatt hours, how much on every phase, how many uh, volts, how many amps, um, and it's all remotely uh, monitorable as well. Um, we'd have a monitoring server in here as well, and, and the monitoring server would run our DCIM software called CubeOS, and that will monitor everything, PDUs, servers, uh, routers, switches, anything that can be monitored funnels back into this monitoring software. Um, one of the things we are working on is, is getting your scripts incorporated into that too, so we can do some remote um, group management of the servers as well as seeing a roll-up of all the servers, temperatures of ASICs, temperatures front and back, um, you know, our, our, what's the hash rates, uh, we, can, we can kick alerts out then, so as soon as your hash rate goes below a threshold, it'll kick you out an alert and you'll know that there's something wrong with the PSU or something wrong with the internet connection. Another thing we can do is fire suppression. We don't have fire suppression here, but we do have a fire alarm and uh, smoke alarm. We can do early fire, uh, early smoke detection. Um, we can also do uh, Novec 1230, which is gas fire suppression. We know that with all this power, it's hot, and you know we've seen fires in, in places in the industry. So you know that would probably be an option people would want to choose. Um, security, we can have internal cameras, external cameras. Again, those all tie into the DCIM and they can alert on motion, they can alert on, on, on any of those things. Um, we can also tie into the PLC, the lighting system. So if you want to see with your camera inside the unit remotely, you can then send a remote lights on command. Lights will come on, you can see uh, your servers a lot better. There's also security access control. So you can do card access on the doors. This all comes from our, our more enterprise data centers, but these are options that anyone can do if they're worried about security as well. Um, we also have environmental monitoring. So this is, this is one of the units that we use, and it's, it's really quite slick. We have four different temperature control, uh, temperature sensors in here. So we, we monitor temperatures in four different locations outside the unit, air coming in, air on the back, air on the front, and then we also have an airflow control, dew point, um, humidity sensor as well. Not only that, we do have a water detector. Um, if we have uh, a supplemental water cooling or um, evaporative cooling, we want to have the water sensor in case something goes wrong and the water starts coming in. The nice thing about this is we also have relays. So we can actually um, output to relays and turn things on and off. Um, remote dialers, alarms, lights, um, basically anything with an on-off we can control through this unit. And what else do we have? Oh, door sensors. So you can see here we've got a door sensor. Well, you can't see. <laughs> but we have door sensors open and closed. So you'll, you'll get an alert if you want to set that up. You can do an alert that'll, that'll uh, tell you that someone's opened the door, someone's closed the door. Um, you've got uh, an ASA firewall. So what we can do with the firewall, Clearly, if you're familiar with firewalls, we can, uh, we can get a secure connection into here. If you have multiple uh, units in multiple places, you can have your own private VPN network between, and you can monitor them all through that, through that network. Also, just gives you another layer of protection against people coming from outside into the servers. We'll uh, start it up for you so you can have a look at what, how it works um, and how easy it is to get going. Once all the servers obviously are in place, it's pretty easy. Um, we just have uh, each PDU is on a 60 amp breaker, so we light it up and three of the servers come up. So we got these three down here, start it up. We don't want to leave it running too long without the fans. So we hit the two fan switches, and they're running at about 50% right now. 
so I'll just I'll just get them going. So there's three fans running at 50%, so that's about 9,000 CFM. So I'm going to bump it up to 18,000 CFM. Um, it gets going pretty good in here. So again, this is all remotely capable. We can control this remotely. We can come in here and change this, or we can have it automated so it, it does it based on temperature. going full speed, you can see that um, there's a lot of airflow coming through here, and the fans, like I said, 18,000 CFM right now, and we can light up the rest of the servers. So, again, this is a, this is a space in between, so this so that the air goes through and when, when it's full of servers, we don't want to overclock those, overspin the fans. So we've left some space in between. Um, seems to run really well. Okay, so that's our overview. We thought we'd show you the whole um, inside and out, the basics, all the options. And we feel like this unit will be able to handle your next generation as well. Um, this generation, no problem. Next generation, you get way more half power out of a 200 amp and a 400 amp unit. When we go above that, we'll have to go to a larger size form factor, not just a 20 footer. But I think you're going to have a lot of potential customers that will find this a good way to do it.